Right then, welcome back to another vid. My first one for absolutely ages, but hopefully, hopefully from this juncture onwards, we'll get back into the swing of things. Because obviously there's this video going up now. Um, there will be a Titanfall vid on Tuesday, which is kind of like a vlog vid. I'm not really, I mean, I'm playing Titanfall, but I'm just talking about pretty random stuff, I guess. But even more random stuff will be on the Thursday Drive vid that will be um, uploaded on Thursday, funnily enough. And that's just me talking about a situation that happened at work, which I thought was uh, kind of funny, a little bit uncomfortable, uh, socially awkward. Um, and yeah, if you want to watch that, then that'll be on Thursday. Or, well, you don't have to watch it Thursday. You could watch it 50 years from now, if you like, or a million years from now. I don't know when you're watching it. It's up to you. But this... Oh, and also, next week, I will have an Xbox 360 pickup special. I went out and I bought 20 games, which is a lot in quantity. Admittedly, some of them are rubbish, but they came in a bundle, and actually three different bundles. Um, but when I broke it all down and kind of looked at the ones I wanted, I said to myself, you know, would I pay $10, $15 each for some of these titles? And there were some of them where I definitely would. So when you added it all together, it worked out at, at a good deal, a very good deal. And it was free shipping, uh, $80 for all 20 games. You're looking at around about uh, 53 quid, very precise there, uh, if you want to convert it to poundage, obviously. So, um, so that's that. So hopefully, like I say, from now on, I'll get back into the swing of things of making vids, watching vids, commenting, the usual stuff, which, you know, um, I guess when you leave it a bit, it becomes very easy to fall out of the loop. I've said that a million times. Anyway, quick uh, swig of tea. And I definitely need it for the old throat. <coughs> Great timing. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying not to cough on this vid too much. If I do, I'll edit it out, um... If I remember, so uh, apologies in advance if it's full of uh, coughs. But when you've got a bit of a cold, what can you do? But it does make me laugh because at work, a few people, a uh, few people, sorry, have been off with the flu, the flu, and um, and when they've came back in, uh, like the, the next day or a few days later, whenever they've come back into work, that classic cliche. It doesn't matter whether in the, you're in the UK or the US. They always say, um, "Oh, uh, it's been going around." What do you mean it's been going around? But every time someone's ill, all, every, that's all people say. It's going around. Yeah, my friend's got it. Whatever. It's always going around, you know. So, uh, but we just use that cliche anyway. So this is uh, a Sony pickup special. All I've got uh, are Sony material. I've got uh, how many games there? Well, three games that I've bought plus two old ones which I've been playing, which I'll briefly talk about. But two new systems. Now, one of them you can probably see is the PlayStation 4. And I'm not going to do an unboxing. You all know what it looks like. Um, but that is that. Now, I'm not sure if the American version is any different. I guess, will it say NTSC? Uh, I guess that'll be the only difference. Uh, there's the back, just in case you want to see that. Maybe it differs to the UK one. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But I, I picked that up last week. Now... If truth be told, when I bought the Xbox One back in, would have been November, I wanted a PlayStation 4. I wanted to prioritise the PlayStation 4 because I'm just more of a, well, not just more of a Sony gamer, uh, going back you know, to the PS2 and particularly the PS1, but also, like many people, I was put off by Xbox's stance or Microsoft's stance when it came to things like, you know, the DRM and uh, the, the, you know, spy cam and all that kind of thing with the Kinect and, and just other things which just made me, it put me off a little bit. But if truth be told, I couldn't get hold of an, a, a PS4 for, for love nor money online. It was extremely difficult unless you resorted to eBay. But then the, the, uh, the problem with that, of course, is the prices were completely fluctuated. And you were looking at kind of, I don't know, like seven, eight hundred dollars, if not more. And there was no way I was going to pay that kind of money. It just wasn't going to happen. So I waited a bit and I thought, you know what, it's going to be difficult to get a PlayStation 4 before Christmas. I'll just get an Xbox One. So I bought that. And up until now, it's been my primary system. And it may remain my primary system because, of course, Microsoft have stepped back from a lot of the um, uh, controversies and they've kind of, um, you know, they've, I guess they've gone back on their word, which makes them look a bit stupid, but it's been good for gamers. You know, with the whole Kinect thing, that's not needed now. The DRM, uh, they've gone back on that. Uh, but it's kind of worrying that they've gone back on it, that they had those ideas, I guess, in the first place. But I, that argument, I guess, has been done and dusted a million times. The fact of the matter is, I like Microsoft and I like Sony. I probably do prefer Sony just because I think I think the games cater more for me, to be honest. But either way, right now I've got both systems and I'm really pleased with it. Now I've only bought one game so far. Actually, that's a lie. I've bought two downloadable games, but I'll talk about them maybe uh, in a gameplay vid. 
I don't know if you just saw it there, actually. Uh, but the one game that I picked up for the PS4 is Infamous Second Son. Uh, limited edition. Why they call it a limited edition, I do not know. You've got to see the sides, uh, obviously. Um, which is <laughs> completely pointless. But I do like, much like many PS3 games, how they've got the kind of the uh, the insides there with some, some artwork. Not that you'd really need to see that, I guess. And a couple of what are probably um, DLC codes or whatever. I'm not sure. Now, I bought this because I did want uh, a PS4 exclusive, and I wasn't going to be buying Knack. That, no way. Not for $40 or $50. Just forget it. It's not happening. Now, pick it up for 20 I might do that for 25 possibly, uh, in the future, or less, ideally. But I knew that if I bought that, it wouldn't really be the right introduction for me uh, as a PS4 gamer and new owner. So I thought, well, let's go with a game that looks really good, that's getting some decent reviews, and could be my thing. And I thought, this may be it. Now, without contradicting myself, even though I'm kind of going to do that, I did have, um, I may still have, uh, Infamous on the PS3. And I know I did have, I no longer have it, but I may get it back in the future, Infamous 2 on the PS3. And if I'm honest, they weren't really my thing. I recognised they were good games. I recognised that, um, you, know, you know, why the reviews are pretty solid and why people like it. But it just wasn't really my thing, so I was very hesitant to get this. But because, like I say, it seems to have got a good reception, and there's no denying that the graphics look really nice, and the neon colours, and I'm a sucker for that anyway, uh, those neon lights. So um, that kind of made me want to go out and get this game. But I paid full whack, you know, looking at $55, $60, which is about 40 quid. So it was expensive, uh, and I've only played it for around about half an hour. Uh, not because it's a bad game, I've just been busy. But basically the reason why I've not been making vids and commenting as much. I've just been busy with work and outside interests. Uh, you know what that's like. So I've not really had an opportunity to give it a proper go. But it's all right. Um, of course, if I say it's good, I just, like I said, I've played half an hour. I need to devote a lot more time to it. Um, but yeah, I think graphically it looks really nice. The, the neon lights look really good. The rain effects, I think, look smart. It's a good game. Uh, I, I don't know whether I should have paid $60 for it, but um, I'm glad to have it. I think it's a decent game. So that's that. Um, you're probably seeing, well, you can see Trials Fusion in the background. This is a game that I do want to buy. Um, I'm not sure whether I want to buy the uh, standard edition for like kind of $40. Or actually, $40. I think it's $20, isn't it, to download it? Or the main version for $40, which includes like the season pass, the DLC, whatever else. I've downloaded the demo. It's quite good, but I also don't know whether I want to get it for the PlayStation or the Xbox. Do I want to prioritise the Xbox One for exclusives, or do I want to go cross-platform? on the Xbox One, or vice versa for the PlayStation. I'm not really sure yet. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I do like this game, uh, and it's it's fun. It's difficult, it's challenging. Uh, and again, maybe in the future, I'll do a gameplay vid for it. So that is that. <coughs> I may edit that out, but in fact, I'm not gonna. So again, apologies for the coughs. So I've got another system, but I'll save that to last because it's the oldest one in the PlayStation family. So straight away, I've given away what it is. Um, but I've got two PlayStation 3 games. Uh, both of them are limited editions. The first one is uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, which is subtitled Guns of the Patriots. Uh, tactical Espionage Action. Again, limited edition. But this truly is, unlike that, a limited edition. A nice little box set. And again, obviously, you've got to see the sides and the back. And uh, what video will be complete without some sticker residue, which should easily come off. So yeah, really pleased to get this. Now, I'm really pleased to get it in the sense that it's hard to get hold of for a sensible price, at least in my experience. Um, but again, I'll be honest and say that Metal Gear Solid, the PlayStation 1 version aside, is a franchise I've never really gotten into. And I have played the PS3 version going back four years, maybe. And graphically, it looked brilliant. And looking on YouTube the other day, before I, I rebought this, it still looks brilliant. You know, for it was a launch game, wasn't it? It still looks really, really good. But when I played this myself, I found it a little bit slow and... I didn't really get into it, but I think maybe a few years later, uh, I think I'll be able to appreciate it a lot more. And um, so I'm really pleased to get that. I'll tell you the interesting thing, uh, I think it's interesting anyway, is obviously, a bit of dust on it there, uh, you've got the old original PlayStation 3 logo here, which is like the kind of the Spider-Man font. And then that moved on, have I got another one at hand? No, I haven't. But it moved on to the newer design with the kind of the black kind of banner. Um, and a it's had sort of a, more of a modernised feel to it. And then now I noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, um, but now PlayStation 3 games are going to have a blue banner to, kind of, uh, to sort of, I guess, to tie in with PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita, which could be confusing, but it also makes like all the games, like the uniformity on a shelf, 
you know, with the old logo, uh, the black logo, and now the new blue one, it makes it look a bit of a mess, especially if you have them in alphabetical order. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing uh, for the PlayStation 3. I guess it doesn't really matter, quite frankly, because they changed it anyway. So it already looks silly with the old logo, the black one. So adding another one, what difference does it make? They've kind of ruined the uniformity. Whereas with the Xbox 360, they've pretty much kept the same design on the side. Uh, they've slightly tarnished it up, especially on the front as well. But if you've got an old Xbox 360 game and a new one all on a shelf, uh, all lined up, mixed in, uh, they pretty much just look the same, that same kind of uniformity, uh, which is pretty regimented, but I do like that. But I think PlayStation 3 games, with this new blue banner, might look a little bit silly, I, I don't know. But that's that, so I'm really pleased to get that. <clears throat> now another game, I've been wanting this for absolutely ages. I've got the standard uh, edition, but I really wanted to get the limited edition. This became a bit of an obsession to get hold of this, and now I've got it. It's not great, it doesn't come with any great um, extras or anything. I just wanted to get it. You know that feeling where you want to get something and you can tick it off the list and move on to the next. I finally picked it up. But basically what I was waiting for was this to appear at a sensible price. Because it doesn't really come on eBay that often. Of course, look now, there'll be a thousand. But in the past, it's not really been available. And when it has, not, as, uh, not at a sensible price. So when I saw this the other day for just under $15, um, including shipping, I had to get it. And it's not an amazing game, but it's Rainbow Six. Vegas 2, and I don't know if you can see like the, the sticker glitter uh, glittering on the front there, you probably can, but it's a nice little effect when you look at it, uh, you know, uh, up front. And again, there's the sides for anyone who likes that kind of thing. I've been doing it for four years, I'm not going to stop, maybe five years. Well, maybe I should stop doing it, it's a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? <clears throat> or maybe not. But the reason why, I've, it's funny, I was watching an N64 vid that I did, um, I don't know why I was watching it, maybe someone left a comment on a really old vid and I clicked on it to reply, so I don't know. Uh, but if anyone has been watching my channel for that long, of the days where I used to <laughs> literally kind of hold up one N64 game, show the sides of it, and then do a gameplay, and I'd default like 20, 30 minutes to one bloody Japanese N64 game, what was I thinking? Why were you watching it? What was going on? Um, but it just made me laugh that I was doing that, and, and why I started to do it, I guess, was because um, the sides are different, you know, in different regions, PAL, Japanese, uh, American, and I just thought it was kind of fascinating and interesting. And they're still doing it now, you know, with current modern gen games, different spines for some games. And I just, at the time, I found it kind of interesting, like, why? For American games and British PAL games, surely they keep the same artwork, but sometimes they don't, and I just found it fascinating. So anyway, that's that. Uh, yeah, the extras it comes with, like a little poker chip um, on a, on a keychain, it's just pretty rubbish, really. But, um... I really wanted to get it, and at $15, including shipping, I was happy to get it, and it's pretty much mint condition too, so I can't complain with that. I'll tell you what, gotta have these swigs of tea, the old throat, <coughs> playing havoc. Now, I picked up a system uh, recently, I'll show you straight away what it is. It is, oh, my voice went a little bit there, um, it broke in my mid-30s. Uh, <laughs> PAL, as you can see in the corner, PAL PlayStation 1. Now this is pretty much mint condition, not just the box, um, pretty much mint, not exactly, but the inserts, I'm not, again, I'm not going to do an unboxing, you all know what a PlayStation 1 looks like, but I was absolutely flabbergasted when I opened it up, it still came in its, like, kind of, that plastic sheeting with a sticker over it, and the controller had, like, the, the wire around it, and it was really tight and stiff, which made it look as if it's new and never been used, so it's in amazing condition, and I genuinely think it's literally mint and never been used before, well, up until I used it. And if that's true, great, because obviously it means the laser's going to last for a long, long time and it's not going to, you know, pack up uh, on me anytime soon, which is brilliant. So I really wanted to get that. Now, I do have a PS2, and you may have seen that on a pickup vid around about a year ago or a bit less, a bit more, whenever it was. And that came with a few uh, PAL PS2 games as well. But the reason I wanted the PS1 is because I prefer the PS1 to the PS2 and I'd much rather play PS1 games on an actual PS1, it just adds that little bit more authenticity to it. I know maybe it doesn't matter for some, but it does for me, you know, particularly someone who's, you know, nostalgic as well. I want the real deal where possible. <clears throat> so um, when the opportunity to, to get this came up, I had to get it. Now, it was on a standard auction. I think the opening bid was $9.99, so $10. And the owner didn't say it was uh, brand new. He just said it was in amazing condition and all the rest of it, and um, I looked at the pictures, and he, he didn't actually have the system out, it was just of the box, and I sent him a couple of questions, said, is it in good condition, you know, even though he said very good, you've got to check with eBay, uh, so he said amazing, actually, 
um, just in case, because you know eBay is notorious for um, a bunch of liars, quite frankly. Uh, you know, when you say or when a seller says it's going to be in mint condition, it probably turns up battered. That's just the way it works. So I asked them a few questions, and they got back and said, "No, it's in great condition," and uh, all the rest of it. So I went ahead. Cut a long story short, uh, there was one other bidder, and I won it. I think including shipping for twenty three dollars, which I'm absolutely delighted with because it's pretty much brand new, brand new PlayStation One, twenty three dollars, around about fourteen quid. Give or take, absolutely chuffed. And it works you know, on my TV as well. Uh, now the problem, if it is a problem, is that I can stretch the image out, but it does look a little bit too pixelated. But if I have it in a windowed mode, which admittedly does mean having a border, big border around it, um, but it works and I'm pleased with it. It means I can play the PlayStation 1 games uh, as and when I want, uh, PAL games, and it's the memories and nostalgia of having the PAL cases. Even though they're rubbish in terms of design, I appreciate that, but I'm really enjoying it. And I've got a short list, uh, I say a short list, it's a very long list of PlayStation 1 games I want to buy back. So maybe from this juncture onwards, I'll really start to, you know, cover a lot of PlayStation 1 games. But the problem is, I'm probably going to want PAL, um, knowing me and the nostalgia. So I'm going to have to import a lot of them, it's going to cost me a lot of money. But the good thing about that, I was thinking about this, if I was to buy a lot of, or not just buy, but prioritise American uh, NTSC PlayStation games, the problem with that is I'd probably be inclined just to buy loads of them and just, just kind of think, oh, it's only four or five dollars here and there. But what I think will work in my favour is that if I'm having to import them from the UK, they're going to cost more because of the currency conversion, the shipping's going to be more, and, um, and what that will hopefully, in theory, uh, do is make me uh, do that old adage of quality over quantity and it'll make me be really choosy about the PlayStation 1 games that I want. So rather than just go out and buy rubbish because, like I said, it's going to cost more money. So I think if this is going to work in my favour big time. So I've got two PlayStation 1 games here. Neither one of them are particularly new. Well, one of them was a gift from Craig, Minx36, about two or three years ago. Um, but I'm showing it because I'm playing it. It's kind of relevant. <coughs> and that game is Destruction Derby. I love these double jewel cases. And this game, and even, it's weird, the back cover more than the front cover just makes me feel so nostalgic. I just, I guess, um, obviously it just reminds me of back in 95 when I purchased this just before Christmas, and it's it's such a brilliant game. And even playing it now, um, it's really playable. I think the only thing against it is that the courses are really narrow, and so there's not really that much room for manoeuvre. But in terms of it being responsive control-wise, it's really good, and I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Maybe I'm blinkered a little bit by nostalgia, uh, but perhaps not. I'm, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant game, and so I'm really enjoying that. And the other game, this would have been on a pickup vid uh, a couple of months back, uh, give or take. So it's a relatively recent game, obviously, for me. But I did used to have this back in, I think it was 96. Yeah, 1996. And it's a one heck of a weird game. Quite uncommon and can go for a little bit of money. Um, I say a little bit, you know, 20, 25 quid, give or take. But also it's the kind of game that if, you know, you're, you're lucky, you can pick it up just for a few quid. But it's, it's very uncommon on eBay, the, the PAL version anyway. And it's um, Psychic Detective. In fact, I think the American version is pretty uncommon. And I remember buying this, specifically buying this from Toys R Us. And um, I just took a gamble on it because it looked interesting. I wanted to play like a, an adventure kind of game. And I saw this on the shelf and uh, I thought, 40 quid? Why not? Because back then, obviously a very disposable income as a teenager. And uh, I just pissed money away every single week on PS1 games for about two or three years. It was brilliant. What a, what a great era. Um, so yeah, it's a really weird game. Maybe one day, like all the others, I'll get around to doing a gameplay uh, vid for, but we'll see. So really pleased to be playing uh, this uh, properly uh, after after all these years. Swiggity. Makes me laugh because I brought some uh, PG tips into work the other day. And it was just uh, amusing watching all these Americans uh, who are obsessed, obsessed with coffee, trying out PG tips. Now, a lot of Americans do drink tea, but it's usually like flavoured tea. Uh, and if it is black tea, it's that kind of Earl Grey stuff, which they just think everybody drinks in the UK. Uh, when it comes to PG tips and Tetleys, they do sell them over here. This, you know, I, I can just buy them easily uh, in Safeway or wherever else for that matter. Um, but they, they don't really tend to drink them in my experiences. So it was funny the other day because it was someone's birthday, uh, the, the manager's birthday, and he wanted this kind of like a breakfast brunch, like a potluck, uh, you know, where you bring everything into, uh, into work to eat rather than going out to dinner which is something we've recently started to do at work because we're starting to get a lot more employees now. So rather than going out to dinner, by the way, there's a dinner story 
uh, and the first day drive. Did I talk about that? I think I did at the start of the video. You've got to watch that. It's not hilarious, but like I, th I think I touched upon the start of the vid, it made me feel a little bit awkward. Uh, but yeah, so um, we don't go out to dinner these days at work. We tend to have the potlucks. So uh, Barry, whose birthday it was, he wanted this um, burrito breakfast, I think he, he called it. Kind of slightly Mexican themed and, um, and all the rest of it. But just breakfast stuff in general, whether it's bacon, sausage, whatever else. And I brought in a couple of things, but one of the things I brought in was some PG tips. And like I said, it was just amusing watching everybody, all these coffee obsessed drinkers, um, putting on a brave face, pretending, pretending they liked my PG tips. And I could just tell, easily tell they were just, it was just that kind of um, etiquette that they were putting on. I knew they didn't like it. They were thinking, what the heck is this? Um, which is, and I just thought it was funny, but I guess they were just being nice. But I love PG tips. It, it's great. Tetley's as well. Maybe I should do a video on, on the best teas. Or maybe that'll be scraping the barrel, <laughs> I think, for videos. But um, I digress. Yeah, so um, I've really been enjoying these two games. Uh, that's all I've got here in the US. I probably have about 150 games. I know that sounds a lot, and clearly it is, in the UK. Uh, PAL box PlayStation 1 games at my parents' house. Some of them are dreadful, uh, like the cheap kind of 50 pence PS1 games. But some are really, really good, and I may have to get them sent over soon. But I think, as I also touched upon before, I've got this short list, which is actually a long list of PS1 games that I want to get back. I want to prioritise the ones I used to originally have back in like late 95, 96 and a bit of 97, maybe a bit of 98 for that matter. I want to concentrate on those ones and I really want to build up my PS1 because going back to the PlayStation 1 properly for the first time in ages, um, it's reminded me that it's an absolutely amazing system, an amazing system. Yeah, the graphics, you know, they've aged a little bit. But I love the whole CD thing. I know a lot of us in the community love carts. I'm no different. I love carts as well. Cartridges are brilliant. Um, they're kind of risk-free. They're usually going to work. CD scratch and all the rest of it. But I won't lie. I'll maybe be the first one to say it for a while. I love CDs. I just think one of the reasons why is because as a kid in my early teens, when they started to come into uh, you know the mainstream a little bit more CDs, they just seemed futuristic. And I guess I've got that nostalgic element to it. So I really love them. And, it, and the box as well. I know the PlayStation 1 games, they crack really easily. They look very, very bland. You know, they're all with the white writing. I realise that. There's uniformity and then there's regimented uniformity. And I think the latter can look a little bit kind of far right wing. <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like too regimented, like I say. Uh, and maybe if you've got hundreds and thousands, maybe it can look a bit bad. But I think, I think if you've got a controlled amount of them, I think it can look quite good and quite artistic in a weird way. So I do like the PAL... PS1 cases, uh, but I definitely do see why some people don't like them. I can see both sides of the coin, but I do want to get more, and I think, like I say, going forward, I'm going to have a lot more of them. The PS2, like I said before, I've got a PlayStation 2. I'm not really that bothered, to be honest, unless it's some specific games, uh, again, which I'd be buying for nostalgic reasons, because the PS2 era, admittedly, early on, I was kind of into it, but as the PS2 era went on, I, I kind of lost interest in gaming a little bit. There was a two or three years where, yes, I did have a, excuse me, I did have a PS2, I did have an Xbox, the Crystal Xbox, which is great. I still think that looks amazing. Um, but I was just a very, very, very casual player, really just exclusively with my friends. We'd, we'd play like Grand Theft Auto, we'd play uh, Pro Evolution, uh, and that's pretty much it. Maybe a burnout game here and there. So I'd say from maybe 2002, 2003, up until 2006, I, I kind of lost touch with gaming a little bit. So I'm not really inclined to go back and pick up too many PS2 games. Uh, but never say never. Uh, you know, it would be foolish to rule out doing it because minds change, you know. Uh, this time last year, I, I wasn't really that bothered uh, about, you know, uh, current gen as an Xbox One, PS4. And now I'm kind of into it. Not massively, but I'm kind of into it. So... I think it's important to never say never and never feel embarrassed, I think, as well, about changing your mind. I know it can make us look a bit of a dick on video, on cam, on YouTube, if we say, I'm not going to get this or I'm not going to sell this, and then five minutes later we sell it. But we shouldn't feel too bad because, like I say, our minds change, our opinions change um, from one day to the next sometimes. So uh, what difference does it make if you buy something and you know sell it and then buy it back a year later? Um, who cares? Just as long as you want to buy it, as long as you're... You're paying your bills and you're not you know, sacrificing real life. If you can afford to buy these games, then, then do it. It's just a hobby. And who cares? Just buy what you want. That's kind of obvious advice, I guess. And that's all I want to say. I think I'm desperately trying to cling on to something else to say. But uh, I think the facts are I've, I've finished the vid, really. 
So uh, that's that. Yeah, really enjoying the, the PS1 again, and that's an understatement. Um, PS2, not really playing, but never say never. PS3 is a brilliant bit of kit, and I really like it. Uh, but the PS4, I am really liking. And like I say, I've downloaded a couple of games lately. I'm probably going to do a separate video for them, maybe like a gameplay with obviously some commentary over the top. Uh, but I'll save those vids for the future. So until then, like I say, Titanfall vid going up on Tuesday, Thursday drive on Thursday. Diary stuff will be coming soon for anyone who likes that kind of stuff. Um, and what else? Games X. Games X vid. Really got to start doing them, as well as Amiga gameplay and all the rest of it. I've also bought two games. I'm not going to reveal the system. Two retro games uh, which for a system which is extremely nostalgic for me. Uh, but I've had to get them sent to the UK because the seller wouldn't ship to America. Um, which is a little bit frustrating, but I'm not that bothered, really. I've got to wait an extra few weeks. Big deal. Um, so as and when they arrive, I'll do a video for that. And then there's the Xbox 360 vid, uh, which will go up sometime next week, I think. And I've just had someone subscribe to me. Michael Stevenson. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> little plug. Don't know who he is. Um, I wonder if it's Mikey C. Michael Coleman. Although it wouldn't be Michael Coleman if it's Michael Stevenson, would it? But if it is Mikey C, then he's just created another channel to go with these previous 8,000 <laughs> channels that he's got. I like Mikey. Mikey, if you're watching this, get back to talking on videos. Don't do the music, which is great, but talk. It's good, I think, the communication. But anyway, I'm absolutely literally talking bollocks now. So I'll be back soon with more vids. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.